Well, welcome to this week's Degrees of Science. Today we're talking about NASA's Tropics mission. So what this mission is, is uh, trying to improve our ability to understand the structure and evolution of tropical cyclones. So today we're talking with Dr. William Blackwell. He's from MIT. He's the principal investigator of this system or this mission. So Dr. Blackwell, I, I love all the acronyms that NASA comes up with. What does Tropics stand for? Yeah, that's a long one. It's a, it's a time resolve observation of precipitation structure and storm intensity with the constellation of small sets. So how much time it's did it take y'all to come up with one that fit a kind of a weathered sound? It was hard. We did, we did spend quite a bit of time trying to capture all, you know, all the things that the mission does. There's quite a bit of new innovation here and, and tie it to the acronym actually, you know, t ties back to the weather we're trying to study. So what is the ultimate goal of the tropics mission? Yeah, well, we're, we're making new observations, uh, and we're making these observations in the microwave frequency range. We've been flying weather satellites for decades that make these measurements. And what we don't get today with our state-of-the-art weather satellites flying microwave sensors is revisit rate. So we have only a very small handful of these giant satellites that orbit in, in uh, polar orbits. Every 12 hours, they revisit a point on the ground. We have a few of these satellites. We have to wait on the order of four to six hours before the next satellite flies over and images a storm. So with Tropics, we wanted to uh, reduce the complexity and the cost of the sensors, make them smaller, easier to build and launch, and launch more of them. So we have a constellation uh, of four satellites, and these make much more frequent revisits of the storm. So now we're getting storm observations on the order of, of one hour with a median revisit. So it's a much faster revisit uh, to capture the, how the storms are changing, the dynamics of the storm, how they're forming and intensifying, so we can study those dynamic changes. When most people think of satellites, they're thinking of these huge things up in space. The all constellation, they're all pretty small, right? They are. They're about the size of a loaf of bread. The, the traditional satellites are about the size of a school bus. Um, so our satellites are about 10 pounds, and the actual instrument in the satellite is about the size of your coffee cup. So we've, we've miniaturized uh, what we call the radiometer, that's the instrument that makes the measurement, and enabled it to fly on a very small satellite, and that drives down the cost of launching them, and we can operate them using a host of, of commodity ground systems that are now available. So we've re we reduced the cost of the mission across the board from the, the spacecraft to the operations uh, to the ground and processing and everything. So when you go from your typical weather satellites, again, you're in the six to 12 hour range of seeing stuff, how much are we seeing changes inside these tropical systems by cutting that time down dramatically? Right, well, so we, we have geostationary satellites that make images on the order of every, every uh, five minutes. And these have you know, exquisite cameras. We take visible imagery of, and we see the cloud tops from geostationary. What we're missing with that is the inside of the storm and the surrounding environment. Um, for that, we need uh, what we call sounding data, data that can make a three-dimensional um, image, if you will, of the atmosphere around the storm. So with tropics, we're looking at the storm environment, the temperature, and the amount of moisture in the air surrounding the storm. And we want to see how that changes as the storm spins up and intensifies. And we want to, act, we want to measure the precipitation and, and the rain bands of the storm, looking at the structure, the asymmetries, the eyewall structure and to capture all those things with, with very high revisit rate. So these are the new things that we're adding to the, the, the state of the art observatory that we're missing. This, this uh, capturing of the environment of the storm on the hour scale and the, uh, the precipitation intensity and structure on the hourly scale. Well, one thing we've seen the last several hurricane seasons, these rapidly intensifying storms. Will, be, will getting the data faster like this help us to see kind of how these storms are evolving in these rapid intensification style setups? We certainly think so. So uh, one example of that was Otis of last year, right? Where this storm came out of nowhere, intensified all the models, missed that. And we, we took uh, rapid measurements with tropics of that storm. And we could see, um, you know, the, 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 the makings of intensification of that that, that, that the models uh, uh, missed. Um, so that's one example where we certainly hope that, that this rapid data will help with this. Uh, that's really the, the most challenging part of, the, of picking up that rapid intensification. Those are really hard to forecast. So there, there's been a lot of improvements with the overall forecast, really talking track forecast and cutting down that uncertainty. Do you think tropics will help the precipitation and winds and some of those style forecasts putting out of how they could impact communities and towns along the coast? We do. 
that's been a, a, traditionally a, a real challenge is to improve on the the uh, the intensity forecasting and we are we are seeing some indications of that that's having a favorable impact using the tropics data but that's really the that's the holy grail is to show that we can uh, improve the intensity forecast uh, with the tropics data so we're working on that and again you know indications are encouraging but we have more work to do on that so with these being smaller satellites are these satellites that'll stay up for a while or would this have to be kind of a redone every so many years to keep them going it will have to be redone. So these are launched into an altitude of about 300 miles up above the Earth's surface. So over the course of five or six years, Earth's gravity will pull them in and they will re-enter for about five years. Um, so they will need to be replenished. And there has been some activity on that. So Tropics, of course, is a U.S. taxpayer-funded activity uh, out of NASA. And we at uh, MIT have been working with the private sector to um, to, to get that technology out and to the companies can can use that. So we've been working with a company uh, called Tomorrow.io uh, based in Boston, and they have announced plans to launch up to 18 more of these satellites. Um, and they will, this as a, as a business model, they're gonna try to sell the data and sell the analytics that come out of that um, to, to, keep the, uh, to keep this data record going. What were y'all able to see last year during a very busy hurricane season? Right. Well, I think there are really three things that we're looking at uh, at a high level. One is it's a completely new observatory, these very tiny satellites. So the first question is how well do these work and can they produce the quality of data that we need to push the needle on the science and the forecasting? And the answer to that is yes, these are very capable. So the, the water vapor information we're getting from tropics is uh, exquisitely good. So we, we can map the water vapor over the globe. We're at, it's good enough for actually we're doing um, uh, some climate studies with the data, looking at diurnal cycle variations. So the quality of the data looks very good. That's the first thing we're looking at. Uh, the second thing we're looking at, of course, is, well, now that we've got the data, how are the forecasts changing? Can we improve the forecast by virtue of adding the tropics data? So that takes longer to assess. We're starting to do that, and we have done some cases on a kind of a spot check basis that do indicate that we are getting an improvement in the forecast of the tropics. Those, those uh, studies continue. That's the second area is the forecast. So kind of the jury's still out. We're still trying to work on that. Early indications are that we, we are making progress on that. And then the third area is the basic fundamental scientific understanding of the storms. Uh, can we better understand how the, the moisture environment drives intensification? Um, can we tag the, the structure of the precipitation to a likelihood of intensification? Those kinds of basic relationships that we're trying to understand in the scientific a formulation. So those studies are also go going on. That, that, that takes longer. Um, so we have, you know, the definitely the observatory is up and running and working great. Forecasting is promising. We, we, we see some, some good indications that that's getting better. And we are trying to do some science studies now on, you know, are these linkages between things that we can measure with this new data and, you know, things that we can use to try to improve forecasting. Do you think, when, like I said, you're you are using four right now, is there a certain point? I mean, could you just put so many and every the more you have, that's just going to cut down the amount of time in between? That's right. As a rule, that's correct. Um, uh, one one thing to think about is, is how they're launched. So the Tropics launches were, were called dedicated launches. We put them into very specific orbital configurations. Um, so they'd be kind of optimally spaced over the globe. And that, that's expensive. to So if you have to buy your, buy the rocket and send it to a specific location, What's much more cost effective is something called a ride share, where you take a launch where somebody's going somewhere else anyway, and then you piggyback on that. Um, that's much more affordable, but you you uh, you have to go where the ride share is going. So the advantage of putting up a lot of the satellites is that you're you're it's it's uh it's, it's less important where they go. If you have so many satellites, you have to put them in specific locations. Anywhere they go, they're going to be they're going to darken the sky, and you'll get a good revisit rate. So that the new model is to go up on ride shares, put them up everywhere, and you'll have a really good revisit everywhere you look. So as being the principal investigator of this, you know, you're, you're learning it as it goes. What, what do you expect or hope to see from this study and all this you're learning, say over the next few years when it comes to learning about tropical systems and the forecasting? Right, uh, well, you know, again, there's a category of kind of the basic scientific understanding. Uh, what are the important uh, markers uh, in terms of the moisture, the temperature? What do we need to study better? What measurements are needed to, to further improve things? So, you know, Tropics is a very innovative system, but it can't do everything. It's got a, a limited set of channels that it uses. It measures from 90 to 205 gigahertz. 
uh, which measures temperature, moisture, and precipitation. We'd like lower frequency measurements that do a much better job estimating the rain rate. So we'd like to push down from 90 to 37 or even 18 or 10 gigahertz. So that requires a slightly larger uh, spacecraft, a larger instrument. So we're looking to expand the observatory to get us better measurements uh, for the things that we, we need, we know that we need for rain intensification and so forth. Um, so there's areas of research on making the next generation of tropics even better by making the, the frequencies uh, cover the, the lower frequencies. Uh, and then there are kind of the analyses studies. Can we uh, be more intelligent about how we use, for example, machine learning and artificial intelligence to try to help us understand how the, the storm is uh, intensifying to help aid the models? Can we use uh, kind of data-driven uh, activities to improve how we t typically do things with numerical modeling? Uh, that's a very interesting area of study that's it's developing and taking off rapidly. Well, Dr. Blackwell, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Very, very interesting. I'm excited to see what, what y'all continue to learn and how this could uh, help out all of us that uh, forecast and deal with these tropical systems. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's a very exciting mission.